All right, so this is MTO with the MTO More Review. But this is the second installment of my overrated series. My first one was on the John Cena CM Punk match at Money in the Bank and on John Morrison. This one is going to be more focused towards the Divas and three Divas in particular. Best Phoenix, Karma, and Layla. Now, I'm someone that's always saying, oh, give Divas a chance. Look at them more for what they do good than what they do bad. But at the same time, my problem isn't with people that like these Divas in particular. That's fine. You can like them. My problem is with the people that come on here and say, okay, every diva in WWE and TNA sucks, except these three divas. These are the only divas that know how to wrestle. That's basically where my problem is. Let me start off by talking about this. Best Phoenix. People say right now Best Phoenix and Natalia are the only current active superstars that can wrestle in the divas division. I can see why they would say that about Natalia because Natalia is actually someone who has a versatile style that can wrestle different forms of wrestling, that can make her opponent look good, make herself look good, has good storytelling, has good in-ring psychology. I can see what people see in Natalia. Natalia is actually good. I see what's great about Natalia. I don't see that in Best Phoenix because here's basically what I see in Best Phoenix matches. Same moves. Clotheslines, slams, Holds, Glam Slam, Pin. That's basically every Best Phoenix match. Not to say that that's a bad thing because every superstar, whether we notice it or not, has their same signature five moves that they do in every match. But I'm just saying, what is so special about that, what she does, that makes her that much better than everybody else? It's really not all that much different. I mean, here's basically the point I'm trying to make. If Kelly Kelly had the moveset of Best Phoenix, you'd still say Kelly Kelly couldn't wrestle. If Best Phoenix had the moveset Kelly Kelly does, you probably still think Best Phoenix is a great wrestler. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, yeah, the only thing Best Phoenix really has to her is she has the look. A good look that p gets people interested in the Divas division. Because she's a powerhouse. She's something different we don't see in Divas. I guess that's why people like her. But then again, Ezekiel Jackson is a powerhouse too. How many people are obsessed about Ezekiel Jackson? That's what I'm saying. Best Phoenix is like the Ezekiel Jackson of Divas in a way. Like, I'm not saying she's bad. She's actually good. I'm just saying... What makes what she does in the ring so much better than what any of the other divas do? Moving on, my next person. Karma. Now, Karma is basically the same as Best Phoenix. She's a powerhouse, someone that can dominate divas. Now, I'm not going to say that Karma is so much overrated as she is overhyped. Because people were saying that when Karma comes to WWE, she's going to come and she's going to bring the divas division back to life. But how long can she go just kicking Divas' asses and only competing in legit matches with one or two superstars? Because let's face it, even if she does come, the Divas division isn't going to change all that much. It's still going to be the same like with Best Phoenix and Natalya right now. People were saying that this whole thing was going to completely change the Divas division and they were all going to get better. How can you expect the Divas division to get better based off of one person? How can one person bring a whole division to become great if you're saying that every other diva sucks except this one diva. I made this point a few months ago. This is basically like if Mark Henry decided he wanted to go on a rampage killing off all the cruiserweights. If you don't care about the cruiserweights, then why should you care about Mark Henry going in there and squashing all of them and only having a chance against Scotty Too Hotty or something? Don't you think you'd get tired of seeing Mark Henry destroy the Cruiserweights for such an amount of time and only having solid matches with Scotty Too Hardy? Just like how people are getting tired of seeing Best Phoenix and Natalia wrestle continuous matches against the same people over and over again. Basically all I'm saying is how do you see Karma being that much different and bringing the Divas division back to life if you say everyone else sucks and she can only have good matches with a couple of superstars on there? Anyway. The last diva that I want to talk about here, Layla. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, everyone hated Laycool. And now out of nowhere, people are starting to say, oh, Layla, she's the only diva that can wrestle. And once she comes back, the Divas Division is going to be alive. What in the hell is this? <laughs> All right. Layla is Omar's favorite diva, so I decided a few months ago I was going to give Layla a chance. I was going to watch a whole bunch of Layla matches together and see if I can see what Omar sees in Layla. And in every match, I see the exact same flaws. I mean, for one, she oversells 
everything. Literally everything. It doesn't matter what move it is. She makes it look like if it's the most deadliest, most vicious thing she's ever felt in her entire life. It just looks ridiculous. It looks cartoonish. It's like Santino Morella. Can you seriously sit there and say that if every diva and superstar was like this and like Santino Morella, that the WWE would be a much better place and that this, this is what a real wrestler should be doing. She screeches before she does any move. People complain about Kelly Kelly's obnoxious screeching. Layla screeches before literally every move. S annoying screeching before every move, even when she's the face, even when she's not supposed to be annoying. She botches consistently. Like every other move, she will botch. There are some times where she doesn't even look like she knows what move she's going to do. Like right here at Extreme Rules with Michelle McCool. This is her signature move, one of her signature moves. And she looks like she has absolutely no idea what she wants to do next. And Michelle McCool has to whisper to her what to do next. I mean, those are the flaws that I see in every single Layla match. And there's more to it. And I'm just wondering, how do you see that as being wrestling? Like, what do people, what are their characteristics? What do they look for in a diva that makes them say, this diva can wrestle because I don't see it in Layla? Like, people can easily point out someone like, let's say, Caitlyn. I'm not a big Caitlyn fan, though she is hot and I definitely do her if I ever had the chance, but that's beside the point. I'm not a big Caitlyn fan. People can obviously point out Caitlyn. She's not all that great in the ring. Why can't people point that out in Layla matches? Based off of the in-ring work that she does, how is she excluded? How is she different from Caitlyn, where she can be so sloppy and so disorganized and so cartoonish in the ring, and people still say she wrestles? Like, what is it about her? Is it the way she's been booked? Is it because of Lay Cool? And one thing that I cannot stand is when people throw Trish Stratus' name out there, as if Trish Stratus was ever that great of a wrestler. She didn't get over because of her phenomenal, uncomparable wrestling ability. What got Trish Stratus over was her character, the way she was booked, the way WWE showcased her that's what got her over it wasn't a wrestling that got her over because Trish Stratus and Kelly Kelly people aren't going to admit this but they're the same thing they're two divas that have the same styles of wrestling they have their her Karanas, their same signature five moves that they do in every match and that's basically every match that they have she made a name for herself based off her character and the way she was booked and that's just basically how it works WWE showcases you like that people are going to start caring if you play the part well Whereas today, WWE doesn't care about their divas, they don't showcase them, therefore people don't care about them and they don't see them as being as great as divas of the past. So yeah, there's my thoughts on those three divas. I don't necessarily hate any of them, I do think that they all have some kind of a good quality that can help make the divas division better. My problem is with the people that overhype them and make them sound like if you're not these divas then you suck. But yeah, anyway, this has been MTO with the MTO more reviews, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. The end.